Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. And I am your host, Matt Watson. And if you're watching live on Facebook, you'll notice that I'm joined this morning by a Vulcan of some sort. We, we, will, we will get to her in, in just a moment. Our show, Eye on the Valley, is brought to you by SCVI and I lead schools. We are a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Agua Dulce, Lancaster. We've also got a fully accredited online school. That's right, TK through 12th grade online. You're thinking there's no way my kindergartner could do school online, but those kindergarten classes are so cute and they are thriving. Speaking of thriving, we've also got a, a, a growing, and, and boy are they growing, homeschool program, I Lead Exploration. So for more information on iLead Exploration, iLead Online, or any of our classroom-based schools, you can visit us at iLeadSchools.org. So, so yeah, we've, we've got our eye. We keep our eye on education here in Santa Clarita and across the country. But like the show says, we keep our eye on the valley as well. So we bring you everything that you need to know about what's what here in the valley. And we do it all, as you can tell, while having a little bit of fun. Because, uh, you know, if, if you're not uh, getting in trouble, if you're not having a little bit of fun, you're doing it wrong. Ah, what an amazing week here in the Valley, here in Los Angeles. Boy, we, we, we put on an amazing Super Bowl under cloudless 80-degree skies while everybody in the Midwest was was freezing their Bengals off. Uh, you know, the hometown team won. Way to go, Rams. Way to go, L.A. Y'all look good. And, uh, and I'd like to congratulate Engineer Patty, who was at least as responsible for the win as Matthew Stafford, Aaron Donald, or Cooper Cup by virtue of the, pa- the, the fact that he picked Cincinnati to win. So uh, Still hold steady on that. <laughs> You're still picking the Rams to I'm lose. S- I'm still picking the Rams to all lose. All right, all right, all right. So, yeah, Patty, uh, he, he picked the Rams three ga- – or picked against the Rams three games in a row. So, way to go, Patty. I'll still pick against them every single game we going go. forward. I also want to congratulate all three of the Rams fans who attended the victory parade oh. on Wednesday. <laughs> that was fun. Um, oh. That was fun unless you're a photographer. But we'll, we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, we do have a great show for you, and, and we're about to get this party started, so, so let's do it. Uh, we're going to be talking first with Ingrid Moon uh, about the CTE, Career and Technical Education Program at SCVI. This is uh, uh, programs that are preparing their high schoolers at SCVI for the job market, for career, for college. And uh, in hour number two, we will hear from Chris Naharo, the new executive director of Bridge to Home. Are you, are you familiar with Bridge to Home? Have, have you heard of them? They are they're quietly doing some amazing work in our, uh, in our community here. So we'll catch up with Chris. Uh, uh, she's actually the new executive director, recently promoted. So, uh, so we'll chat with her in the second hour. Uh, they're making a difference here in the Valley that you won't want to miss. And yes... Yes, Big T will join us at the end of the show. Mom makes me, but you know he's actually getting kind of good. He, he'll have uh, he'll have trivia. He'll have fun facts. Uh, he's a lot of fun, and uh, you know it gives me the opp- opportunity to humiliate Patty a little bit, and and you can play along at home too. So let's go ahead and get this show started. My first guest today works on the upper school side of iLead's founding school. That's uh, upper school is how we refer to grades 9 through 12. Well, Matt, isn't that high school? Well, yeah. If you've been to SCVI, you know we refer to things a little bit differently because, well, because we do things a little bit differently. We intend to be a little bit, uh, a little bit different, a little bit cutting edge, a little bit innovative. Uh, so, so, yeah, Ingrid works at the upper school at SCVI right here in Santa Clarita. Ingrid Moon is an iLead science facilitator, and, and there we go again with our language. That's what we call our, our credentialed teachers. They're facilitators because they don't stand at the front of the room and, and preach their classes like, uh, like you think of Charlie Brown's teacher doing, but uh, <laughs> they facilitate the learning that the, the learners are in charge of. But uh, So yeah, Ingrid, uh, she facilitates science at SCVI's upper school. She became a teacher after working for over 25 years in the interactive and technology industries, creating products for companies like Disney, PlayStation, Acura, HealthNet. You ever heard of any of those? Yeah, yeah, and and a lot more. And again, if you're watching on Facebook Live, you can see Ingrid is an unapologetic nerd. Star Wars, Star Trek, Marvel, Uh, she's an enthusiast, a a customer. She's also a wildlife rehabilitator. She's just a great person. Ingrid, welcome to Eye on the Valley. Good to have you. 
Thank you so much for having me. All righty. So I've referred to it a couple of times, but this is, we have to recognize this is radio and there's plenty of folks in their car listening. Would, would you explain a little bit about, uh, about what you're wearing this morning? <laughs> so I decided that I need to, uh, they say you should dress for the role you want. <laughs> And so like I've, I've, I've got my blue uh, Star Trek uniform on mm -hmm. and my uh, Vulcan ears, or Romulan maybe, depends on what mood I'm in. And uh, so I am uh, dressed for success today. And, and you did this because it's some sort of special day at the school, or, or what's going on? Uh, I'm a teacher, and teachers are a little <laughs> weird. Facilitator, of course. Um, no, I did this just to surprise you. Aww, so you're that amazing. while we're here on, uh, those of us who can see us on, on camera... <laughs> Maybe there's a little show to go with it. <laughs> okay, so so I mentioned you uh, you had a very successful career in in the technology industry. So so talk to us about your your journey into education and and how you ended up ultimately at SCBI. Well, uh, it's kind of a long journey because when I very first started out in the corporate world, I actually worked for um, like the training department at HealthNet, which is you know big health company. It was back then. It was. This is a million years ago. So back then, it was actually still a nonprofit company before okay. it became a for-profit. Um, and our training facilitator was, um, I should say, our we were called facilitators. Our, um, cool. Well, we were called performance development specialists. But when you were in the classroom, you were a facilitator. So, right. so a lot of the language and everything still matches. Mm -hmm. Anyway, long story short, internet career developed out of that. And um, uh, toward the end, when I was working for Disney, we were building schools in China. Uh, literal physical schools, mm -hmm. and you'd go in, and they had interactive whiteboards and this amazing technology where if wow. you used something on the whiteboard, it would jump to the wall next to it. So it had this magical, like, two-screen immersive experience that only Disney can really afford so to Like the whole provide. matrix, you just grab it and pew, it throw kinda, it on the other Yeah, wall. exactly. Wow. Exactly. You touch the fish, the fish jumps into the, the, the pond on the other side or something. Very cool. It was really cool. So that kind of technology and a lot of R&D with Disney and stuff like that mm -hmm. was really fun. And then I just was really in love with this idea of education. Mm -hmm. uh, I never wanted to be a teacher, really. But um, uh, then I started working for a company where I was working with, like, Allegiant Air, um, designing, uh, got technology, well, basically videos that showed pilots how to understand the mechanical workings of their airplanes, like okay. pneumatics and all that stuff. And uh, it was very fascinating working with uh, experts who knew the stuff and, and building these videos and learning so much about the engineering of airplanes. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, at the same time, my kid was uh, kind of uh, not doing so great in his public school, and I took him to um, what was then, it was before it was ILEAD, but the next mm -hmm. year it became ILEAD. But anyway, it was a project-based learning school. He thrived. It was beautiful. And then meanwhile, I got kind of roped into teaching fifth grade <laughs> i don't even know how that happened really but okay it was it was and it was it was like the greatest experience ever and i thought wow here's a job where i'm not a, a, just a number on a spreadsheet mm -hmm. this is a job where i like can like do something meaningful and have fun and just be my authentic self <laughs> all the time and it was how, how much better does it get right oh yeah Definitely. Um, and, and so you're quite unique and innovative, um, and, and so is your journey. And a, you're a perfect match for, for SCBI. Um, so, so talk about that because, uh, you know, you mentioned your, your son's been to the, the traditional schools, and, and you've spent your own time in, in traditional public <laughs> schools as right. a kid, I'm sure. Um, so what makes SCBI unique or, or a little bit different? There, there are two things that I really love about SCBI. One is the culture. Uh, the culture at our school is very, it, it, we use love and logic and other systems, not punitive, not like super rule-based. And it really gives a lot of kids the opportunity to grow and flourish uh, as their own people, the flexibility mm -hmm. that, they, that they have to become human beings and not just little robots in a, in a desk under a highly controlled situation. My classrooms look like chaos half the time. <laughs> and honestly, like, I, I wouldn't want it any other way. These kids are fully engaged if they're sitting down and they're you know kind of stuck in their little world then I, I don't feel like they're really engaging in the material the same mm -hmm. as when they're interacting with each other and and that kind of thing and also the culture is very friendly and the kids are very inclusive and uh given how weird i i can be <laughs> how much better can it be than when you walk to school and the kids are like oh it's so funny you're wearing elf ears or whatever uh -huh. and uh you just can't you just can't beat that that sense of of love and joy that everyone seems yeah. to have. Well, you talk about that chaos and and it's funny because it is 
kind of that, that that controlled chaos. It's it's that shift. You're right. Well, I don't know how controlled I am. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can get fun in there. Loose. But um, you know, it, it's that shift from compliance and control based. Yes. You know, you you will sit where I tell you to sit. You're gonna look forward and you're gonna do what I tell you to do. And uh, you know, the the academics I mentioned before, but also you know the the behavioral standards and the choices that that kids make we put it in in their hands right they they get to do whatever they want whenever they want no but <laughs> they're responsible for their own decisions right right and, and that's one of those things where um a putting them in control of their own academics it it uh, it engages them more helps them learn uh, about things that they're passionate about and and they grow a lot more quickly that way but when it comes to their own decisions it uh you know, I remember my first year that I was at SCVI, my colleagues kept telling me, back off, let them do it, let them yeah. do it. And my concern was, but they're going to do it wrong. And the <laughs> answer was, yes, and they're going to learn from that and they're going to grow, whether it's, you know, making a mistake in, in something that they shouldn't be doing or making a mistake on their math. Um, they're they're going to learn, and, and that's why I'm there, is to help walk them through. Right. So uh, Guide them on so their own path. You're absolutely right. Very unique and, and, and exciting culture. So... Um, how about upper school? Cause there are a few myths out there around, around our school. I know that there's a myth about, uh, about the, uh, that a small school doesn't have the real high school experience, but, uh, but you guys have, you have sports and, and dances and, and yeah. all those things that, uh, uh. A typical high school would have just on a little smaller scale, right? It's a little smaller scale. Um, uh, the sports are in, I believe, what's called the Omega League. I'm not sure what what version of everything I, that I, is because I'm not right. the sports person. Mm -hmm. But uh, like our basketball team just went to Malibu to play in the playoffs uh, oh, wow. last weekend. So, I mean, we have real sports. We have a um, lot of great uh, great kids who really love to get involved in the sports as part of the thing. You know, everybody finds their passion. And mm -hmm. if you go to a high school where you go just for the sports, like you're going to find your thing. And here we have kids who are really there for very maybe different reasons, but they're, mm -hmm. but they love sports. And so they get to play baseball, softball, swimming, golf. Um, I can't even name them all. They're oh gosh. So, so you've got a myriad of sports. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of sports, but you're right. Kids may choose to enroll in SCVI because they, they want the IB program, right. which we'll talk about in right. a little bit or the, the flourishing arts program that we have that, that we'll talk about in a little bit, or, or maybe they like that smaller campus feel. Cause we are a, right. a smaller campus. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's funny. Um, folks used to refer to SCVI as kind of a, an alternative school. <laughs> we are not, we are, we are a typical high school. We just a lot smaller, and, right. and we're able to to specialize on uh, in a lot of things. But we do have dances. Um, we do have uh, lots of activities. We had movie night last semester, where you know we have, it's outdoors. We have the giant inflatable screen. Um, all the kids come and they socialize, and we have pizza, and and it's a great time um, just to, for socializing and doing things that like maybe you couldn't even do in a really in a big school. So. Yeah, yeah, and it's so I love that uh, that kids can have that small school feel, but still participate in, in right. all the different the different activities. Um, you know, one of my favorite stories when I was out at SCVI, I was the director at the upper school, as you know, and and um, I walked in. We were I think we were going to do professional development with our teachers, and I turned on the soundboard, and one of the freshmen yelled at me because I was touching his soundboard. Right. They, they <laughs> took ownership of the theater. Right. And, and it, it, he said, what do you, what do you want to do? I said, well, after, after school, we're going to be doing some, okay, let me call my mom. I'll let her know I'm staying late, but right. don't touch my soundboard. Uh, stayed to help you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. He did not want the old man in there playing with his stuff. Well, <laughs> and, you know, you don't want, like they set things up and they're, they're got it ready to go for their performances or for whatever they're sure. doing. And you know, they don't want some, some dude coming in and messing up their. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Take that stage production seriously, man. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, and it, gosh, there's so much that uh, if folks are listening that they might want uh, to to know more about SCVI. I know you have a an upcoming upper school informational night. It is it, so th that's I think for your current eighth graders, or is that for other folks that might not be enrolled? And, and, and absolutely are anybody. Obviously, eighth graders right now are all selecting their their high schools that they want to go to. Even our own eighth graders may choose not to stay. They may want to go somewhere closer, mm -hmm. or some different experience that they want. But uh, we really want to let everybody know what we have to offer, and especially with our new CTE programs and things like that. We we really want everybody to understand that like this is a really great place to stay and go to high school. And so we're gonna have a parent night, and hopefully parents will come and. Hear, hear about us and maybe their kids will hear about us and yeah. 
and say, hey, you know what? That seems like the place I want to go. So if, if listeners have an eighth grader, or gosh, mm-hmm. if they have a tenth grader and they're, yeah, they're yeah, thinking exactly. about switching schools, exactly. uh, they, can, uh, they can come on out. For information on that, you can go to the SCVI website. It's actually iLeadSantaClarita.org, or you can call the front desk. It's uh, 661-705-4820, 661-705-4820, or just do the easy thing and Google SCVI. And you can get more information on the upper school information night that's coming up and, or anything else that, uh, that that's you're the, interested in doing. The 23rd at 6 o'clock. Oh, fantastic. And then from 7 to 7.30, we'll, it, it may end a little shorter than that, but, but at that end period there, we'll have lots of uh, breakout sessions. So you mm-hmm. can go talk to specific facilitators about their particular programs or um, – you know, just have a general Q&A about whatever. Fantastic. And, yeah, they can approach the facilitators, the administrators, and, and chat with them. And, and I'm sure Ingrid would be willing to, to take off the pointy ears if those intimidate you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have some so, other yeah. things I could be wearing. Uh, okay. Helmets. That'll be and fun. <laughs> wow. Nerd extraordinaire Ingrid Moon, facilitator at SCVI, SCVI, is joining us this morning. We'll talk to her about career and technical education at SCVI, some really important ways that they are preparing their kids for career paths uh, at uh, SCVI Charter School. We're going to take a quick break, but we will be right back. I'm Matt Watson, and this is SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. You're listening to your hometown station, KHTS. Choosing the right copy service was a top priority for John Hayes, owner of Hayes Plumbing in Santa Clarita. John's glad he called Sean Milligan at Professional Copy Service. Uh, Well, once we found Sean at Professional Copy Service, um, we've been very, very happy. We started using him right after our factory warranty had expired on the current copier that we had purchased. And uh, Sean and his guys have been uh, far and above uh, better than the factory warranty service. Professional Copy Service, 299-5756. 299-5756. The only authorized Canon dealer for sales and service in Santa Clarita for Santa Clarita Professional Copy Service. We try to keep everything we can in this valley. Uh, we shop local ourselves and we try to use any uh, local merchant as possibly can. Call Sean Milligan at Professional Copy Service. 299-5756. Call Professional Copy Service immediately. They'll save you a lot of time and get your office staff back up to full production. Professional Copy Service. Santa Clarita's only authorized Canon Office Equipment Dealership. Ask about our free on-site demos. February Senior Free Month at the San Diego Zoo Safari Park. Visitors 65 and older receive free admission all month long. Whether you choose to get up close to your favorite wildlife, explore our unique habitats, relax with a drink and a view at Kimajami Overlook, or come along for an unforgettable safari adventure. There's something for everyone and countless memories to be made. With each and every visit, you make it possible to save wildlife worldwide. Guests must present their valid photo ID at any safari park ticket window to gain free admission, parking not included. San Diego Zoo Wildlife Alliance is an international National nonprofit conservation organization that operates two world class parks, the San Diego Zoo and the San Diego Zoo Safari Park, and empowers people to connect with plants and animals, develop an understanding of nature, and contribute to safeguarding wildlife everywhere by becoming wildlife allies. Visit sdzsafaripark.org and find out how seniors have free admission throughout February. Why did Mercedes Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO, Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station. 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. And this morning, I'm joined by Ingrid Moon, facilitator at SCVI Charter School. And we're talking about preparing students for future careers, or what we call career and technical education. You'll hear us refer to it as CTE as well. That's short for career and technical education. So Ingrid, tell us a little bit about 
CTE, Career and Technical Education. Why is that so important and, and why are schools across the country starting to adopt these CTE pathways? I was going to say that it is definitely, it's not unique to us. It, uh, all, it's uh, certainly a mandate in California and I believe across the country that uh, people, uh, that schools provide these um, sort of customized uh, pathways that really focus on career and integrating your general knowledge with your in general academics with uh, a career focused mm -hmm. uh, sense of purpose basically there's all kinds of different programs out there like nursing or uh, aerospace or uh, gosh you know auto mechanics um, so if you think about it like the 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 way vocational programs used to work okay. is kind of like vocational program, but integrated with a regular high school um, academic program so that kids are getting both the high school knowledge that they need and some career focused uh, learning experiences. That's an interesting distinction. So it's not just, uh, you know, what we, some of us oldie oldsters remember back from the 60s and 70s of kids being tracked. Oh, okay, right. you're not really on track for a college going education and you might not even make it out of high school. Let's, let's get you in a, in a, in a shop class or something like right. that. So you can work with your hands. Certainly there's plenty of that. I've, I've seen band saws and 3d printers <laughs> and things like that at, uh, at SCBI. But, uh, what are some of the benefits that learners, uh, uh, that learners can glean on a CTE track? I think one of the best benefits is, like I said, a sense of purpose. Uh, if you're, if your academics are meaningful, and at, certainly at SCBI, that's that's a really important part of our of our curriculum is to make sure that that we're using real world experiences, real world projects to try to give sen kids a sense of purpose. And they're going to engage better in that knowledge, and they're going to learn a more uh, deeper sense of uh, of whatever I'm trying to say. They're they're going to <laughs> learn deeper <laughs> knowledge sure. with that. Uh, it's not just a matter of like I'm learning my math, my biology, and my English. Mm -hmm. How does that how are you going to use that in the real world? And so CTE provides a lot of really cool um, career-focused pathways that allow uh, learners to to sort of step into an area where they might have some interests and learn how that's being used, how their academics are being used in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, even if they don't go down one of those paths as like a final career, I certainly didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, how do you go from like, I went to film school to uh, engineering and internet technology, right? Like, and yeah. we don't know what jobs are going to be out there down the road. So, mm -hmm. but at the very least, it gives them a sense of uh, engagement in their education, which I think is really the most important part. Well, it's like scaffolding um, the, I'm not sure if the word is usefulness of, of, of your education, because all education is useful. Um, but, you know, I remember sitting in class and it was that age old question, when am I ever going to use this right. in the real world? So, you know, teachers have constantly fought that battle. Trust me, you're going to need to know this when you're working on real stuff. Well, you can ratchet that up and you can simulate real stuff or with things like CTE and project-based learning and, and things like that. Why not have kids actually do real stuff right. that, that plays a role in the world around them? And, you know, it, it, it's funny. Um, that was one of the biggest differences I noticed. I taught for 16 years before I joined SCVI. And I used to joke that um, for those first 16 years, I, I was preparing students for when they went into the real world. When I got to SCVI, uh, the kids at SCVI seem to have this audacity to think that they're already living in the real world. Right. And they can affect the real world, right. change the real world now. And, 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 and I say audacity because, yeah, who says that there's an age limit to when you can start being the change that you want to see in the world? Exactly. Right? I mean, hell, mine started when I was in middle school, right? <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, definitely. So you mentioned there's, there's just literally hundreds of, of CTE pathways that you could, you could take. Um, at, no school can take on all of no, them, right? No, so, so especially you, not a small school. Sure. <laughs> right. It's tough to have a high school of 250 kids with a staff of 350, right? Right. right. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> sure, sure. Just not economically feasible. So so what uh, what CETE pathways have, have you all chosen? What do you offer at SCBI? So we have – so we we are basic. well, I don't want to say that we're basically an arts school. We, we're obviously <laughs> – we offer a lot of things. Uh, let me backtrack a little. Okay. We have a very strong emphasis in the arts 
for, mm-hmm. for whatever reason since before I got there. Uh, we have this beautiful, gigantic theater uh, with you know these wonderful productions that we do. So starting out with CTE in the arts was a, a great uh, starting point for, for us to start bringing this, these programs in. But I'm an engineering and science person. And so, mm-hmm. um, it's, and I did theater when I was a kid. I mean, it's not that I'm against the arts, but I see this opportunity for more. So what we have currently, we have an arts, media, and entertainment industry sector um, path pathway, which is great for the area we live in, right? There's a lot of folks in, and I'm doing the air quotes. If you're listening in your car (laughs) in the industry that, that live in and around Santa Cruz, Santa Cruz is known as a a great place for filming and, and production and things like that. So preparing kids for, for those types of careers. Right. And what's really important to understand is it's not just, Oh, I'm going to do theater. It's at school. It's, Mm I'm going to learn how to use this in the industry, how to become a professional, how to mm. sort of entrepreneurially uh, extend myself when I become an adult. And wow. you can graduate high school, and, and it, it's not a matter of just knowing how to audition and how to do mm-hmm. these things. How do you manage your money? How do you know where, how do you gonna, how are you going to invest your money so that you can make this a long-term wow. thing? How do you deal with unemployment in between gigs? How do you uh, get a job at a you know, at a, as a, an assistant director being mm-hmm. called on all the time or, or sure. at a permanent facility or something more, you know. So the full wraparound education. Like Patty's job here. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> so you've got, uh, I don't remember what you called it, but the theater design and uh, production. Arts, media, and entertainment. Arts, there you go. That sounds a lot uh-huh. better. And, and then what other pathways do you have? So the other path we have is engineering. Um, and we have a, a broad variety of different, uh, different pathways in that. One is uh, gaming and VR production, which is... There is sort of an IT pathway for gaming that a lot of schools offer, but mm-hmm. I thought, you know what? My, my husband is a, an award-winning VR producer. Wow. I have seen some really amazing technologies that are being built that nobody's prepared for at this point. And even he, you know, being 50, like had to start from scratch. When VR comes out, you're like, well, I don't know what to do with this stuff. Mm-hmm. So you have to learn it right away. So I'm actually, I ter- pulled it into the engineering aspect because there's so much technology behind sure. all of this gaming and everything. Um, it's more than just software, right? Right. So I really want these kids to go out in the real world and have a really good experience of knowing how these things are created so they're, they have a much broader picture than your typical, like, out of school um, you know, brand new employee who's like, okay, put me in the coding uh-huh. section, right? <laughs> um, if they want to code, great. Uh-huh. Uh, the other thing is we have um, uh, theme park design. Since I worked at Disney oh, wow. and uh, I, n- I have worked a lot with Imagineering, mm-hmm. um, we uh, and, and plus the aerospace and all those things, there's there's a lot of opportunity for that. To, so it's all under interactive entertainment. Yep. So even though it's engineering, it's still arts and entertainment oriented, gaming, VR, theme park design, et cetera. And then the new one that we're adding this next year is a uh, remote pilot certification. So this is a whole oh. different. Okay. So explain <laughs> that to me. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So in our eighth grade, the eighth graders do their glider project, which if you don't know about that, it's basically they spend practically a semester learning all of the science behind flight forces and, and Bernoulli's principle and all kinds of things that are related mm-hmm. to flight. And they're building models and they're doing all this stuff. And then they go on a, a uh, an actual flight in a glider and if they're with a pilot of course and they get to actually fly that glider in the sky like a real glider right and we're so, not talking about for those of you that think like i do we're not talking about one of those balsa wood planes that you just no, chuck into the wind no. we're talking about a full-size airplane it's like 62 with no feet engine. wing yeah, yeah. span and and you know engine exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. it and gets towed up, towed by up. A, a, yeah. so uh so the kids are actually flying actual airplanes wow. in the sky right so a lot of them come out of that with this just passion for aviation. Uh, and my son was one of these, where he, he was on the simulator all the time. Just He was the one who teaching other kids how to use the simulator, things like that. He was really into aviation. Now he's trying to get his pilot's license. So, because he was in this eighth grade program, right? Mm-hmm. So, it's a little difficult to get a full-scale pilot program going right away. So what we've started with is remote pilot, which is uh, drones. Right, yeah. And drones is a huge growing industry right now. Mm-hmm. And, but you need certification to fly outdoors. And there's, Mm. again, applicable to many different industries, real estate, industry, um, industry, like, uh, what's the word? 
Anyway, well, yeah, entertainment. All of my real estate buddies use drones to film their <laughs> right. properties uh, that they're selling. And then, construction. Well, we saw an amazing drone Energy. show before the Super Bowl just last week. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And, and lots of applications, right. in, including geology and, and some yes, of the other sciences exactly. where it makes it. They're putting drones in volcanoes. Right. I mean, drones are, if you think about the, the rovers on Mars are effectively ground-based drones, right? They're sure. remote-operated vehicles. Right. Yeah. So, and there's a, a friend of mine uh, does submarines. They drop drone submarines down. So th they're submersible drones. Okay. So do kids actually come through this program with their... Their drone license? Their yeah, so the point is uh, for them to obtain their, it's called a Part 107 okay. license. Uh, that enables them to fly pretty much anywhere. They understand all the same basic uh, basics of aviation airspace um, that a regular pilot would. And that knowledge that they gain from that certification can be applied directly toward a regular pilot's license. Mm -hmm. So it, it actually kind of helps bridge um, in a very safe and, and helpful way <laughs> into the pilot program. So we're hoping to have a pilot program within the next year or two. Wow. So if anybody started with the drone thing now, they could switch over. Mm -hmm. um, but it just, yeah, it just provides a whole new pathway. It's fascinating and I'm sure extremely engaging, right? What kid wouldn't want to go to high school and learn how to develop virtual reality or get their drone license or, you know, start launching their career in the entertainment industry. All of these extremely viable careers, especially where we live here in Southern right, California. Right. But what about the three R's or the four R's or are they all R's? What about like the math and the science and the history and the, <laughs> and the English? Are the kids getting that as well? Of course. So as we said before, CTE integrates the, the general knowledge that they're going to get at any high school mm -hmm. with whatever they're doing in a realistic way. So if you're learning about pilot certification, you, you have to learn all about like uh, weather is the simple part of that, but all earth science related things that you have to learn about. And then the level of depth to learn uh, for flight uh, certification, either as a pilot or as a drone pilot, the, the earth sciences, so to speak, that you have to learn for that is, is incredibly deep. Mm -hmm. The math that you have to know how to do. Uh, my kids right now are building a, their own drone course, basically just a scrap wood left mm -hmm. over from the theater, right? Um, the, the skills that they're using, some of them never touched a hammer. Like how, how can you be like 16, 15 years old and never have touched a hammer in your entire life? That mm -hmm. it just blows my mind, right? <laughs> we had shot class when we were young, right? They well, my 15 year old, I wouldn't let touch a hammer for a little while. Oh, uh, well, okay, <laughs> maybe, maybe uh, but honestly, and they're in there using, and I had to teach them to use, you know, use the bandsaw, use the, um, the, uh, belt sander, use the, you know, the drill, sure. just use a drill. How do you yeah. just flip the switch back and forth? Right. Yeah. It just, and then they're, you know, oh, I need a nail. No, you don't use a nail with that. You use a screw with that and whatever. So it's, it's really these just fantastic skills that they're using both these design math, uh, and, and hands-on tools combined. Like it's just, so rather know. than just teaching the educational theory, teaching the standards, uh -huh. and then when you're all done or when the kid gets impertinent and asks, when am I ever going to use this? Then the, the teacher will list, well, you'll use this if you go into this career or this career. You kind of flip it on its head and say, all right, let's do that real stuff right. that's exciting and engaging. And then all of the academic stuff becomes almost incidental. Yeah. And the kids have to learn that because they're passionate about what they're doing. Right. And, and then therefore they be, like I said, almost by happenstance become passionate about learning the state standards and, and everything that they need to learn in high school. That is fascinating. Now, um, really quickly, um, how do learners enroll? Is this something that like when they sign up for the school, they have to choose their pathway or um, they just bop around from class to class? <laughs> what, how does it work? It helps if you choose a pathway early because you need to take an introductory class and then at least one concentrator course, which would be like your 10th or 11th grade. Okay. And then at least, uh, at the very least, your capstone course, which is includes internship, portfolio, college applications, everything, entrepreneurship, all the different things that you might need for that career, um, sort of puts it all together in a package for you to basically exit high school with ready to go. Mm -hmm. Ready to either whether you go to college or you just start a career, either mm -hmm. way. Um, so you have to have those three things. So if you start as a ninth grader or a tenth grader and you choose a pathway and you continue down that pathway, that's the best way to go. Now, if you're in a ninth grade and you say, I really don't like this, I want to do theater, I didn't know how much I would love theater, and you want to switch from one to the other, you totally can. And one of the great things about our pathways is because we have so many different uh, classes offered 
within these pathways, you can cross over. Okay. So, for example, you could do uh, intro to engineering to start your your drone pathway, mm -hmm. and then you take a drone the drone certification course. You take film uh, as one of your art courses, right? Sure. That, because yeah. why wouldn't they go together uh -huh. perfectly, right? And then you take your capstone, get an internship, or go build a portfolio mm -hmm. of work that you do, and suddenly you're ready to walk out the door ready for people to hire you. But then, like you said, if uh, if a kid's going down that path and then they take that film course and decide, wow, this is really what floats my boat, they it makes it a little bit more complicated, kind of like changing a major in college, right? Yeah. But you uh -huh. can absolutely uh -huh. switch over. Absolutely. That is good to hear. We're talking this morning with Ingrid Moon, facilitator at SCVI, about the amazing career and technical education pathways that they have at their innovative high school right here on uh, – uh, on the west side of the valley. Um, but uh, when we come back, I want to talk about one of the other programs, talking about the International Baccalaureate that you have at, at SCVI, because that's something that's uh, that's changing the way we do education, at least here in the United States. A lot of other countries ahead of us on this one. But like I said, we got to take a quick break. We will be right back. I'm Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI, and I lead School's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome to Duncan, where safety for you and our crew is priority. Store employees now wear N95 masks. There's plexiglass between you and our crew. In addition, employee temperature checks and health questions are done at every shift change. Be sure to get the Duncan app and order online. Earn points and get rewards. Choose curbside pickup or delivery. Duncan has two locations in the SCV, Bouquet Canyon with curbside pickup and delivery, or try the Canyon Country drive through Santa Clarita runs on Duncan. This is Carl Goldman. The past two years have been challenging for all of us. That's why I want to tell you about the incredible products at MyPillow. Their Giza sheets and mattress covers are spectacular. Now you've got to try their towels. Mike Lindell, the inventor of MyPillow, is changing the game with his six-piece towel set. This set is made with U.S. cotton, making it extremely absorbent. The set comes with two baths, two hand towels, and two washcloths, typically retailing for $109.99. For a limited time, you can get this set for the low price of $39.99 with promo code KHTS. Remember, all my pillow products come with a 60-day money-back guarantee. Just go to MyPillow.com and click on the radio listener specials to get this insanely low price of $39.99 on the towel set. Enter promo code KHTS or call 800-973-3927. That's 800-973-3927. Use promo code KHTS. This traffic update is brought to you by Owen Patterson & Owen. Owen Patterson & Owen is a trusted partner with KHTS, our hometown station. If you get hurt or injured in an accident, we are your trusted partner. We're a firm you can trust. 888-OPO wins, and we do. Go to opiolaw.com. In these challenging times with virus attacking, I built my immune system with IV therapy at Hestia Medical Spa. I'm KHTS owner Jerry Sreddy Goldman. My husband Carl and I believe Hestia's Medical Spa IV therapy has been a powerful addition for strengthening our immune system. I've been using an IV combination of vitamins and minerals to help me fight off COVID and other viruses. Boost your energy and immune system with IV therapy at Hestia Med Spa in Valencia. Details at HestiaMedicalSpa.com. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. And this morning I'm joined by facilitator, educator extraordinaire, Ingrid Moon. She's got her Star Trek uniform, her Star Trek ears on this morning, and uh, we're just having a great time here in the studio. We're talking about preparing students for future careers, or what we call in education these days, career and technical <laughs> education. Ingrid, we were talking before about um, several of the different pathways that you offer your, your learners. I was kind of surprised by how many that you, you told us that you guys offer at the school, but you mentioned during the commercial break, you actually forgot one or two. <laughs> okay, so we have we have performing arts, mm -hmm. stage and technical management, mm -hmm. uh, film, and now we've just added 
art, uh, visual arts, mm -hmm. uh, which is, um, it's really great. She's going to have digital arts, fine arts. There's all kinds of uh, combination of different arts in there. So if you're really, if you want to become a Disney artist, like that's the way to go, right? Fantastic. And that in addition to all of the, right. Plus the, the engineering, engineering pathways and, and amazing things that your kids are, are doing out there. Yeah. So really it's a... Uh, it, not a magnet school, but it kind of seems like it would be a magnet school for any area of the arts, entertainment, engineering, piloting, gosh, all of those those cutting edge things that, uh, well, gosh, they can't fill those jobs here and just really preparing <laughs> kids. And speaking about preparing kids for, for life beyond high school, um, you all have offered, gosh, for oh, almost a decade now. Um, the International Baccalaureate Program. In fact, SCBI is is still the only IB, again, International Baccalaureate, they're the only IB school in Santa Clarita. So can you can you give us a little bit of background, tell our listeners who might not be as familiar uh, on what the International Baccalaureate Program is? Okay, well, a lot of people compare International Baccalaureate with AP in the sense that it uh, can help you get college credit, things like that. But I really think the IB program, it's its a more international program. Well, it is an international mm -hmm. program. I mean, you can go to uh, England or Africa or, you know, India, and you'll find International Baccalaureate programs there with a, a worldwide standardized education. And so... Uh, a lot of people have said, you know, American education is going downhill and so on and so forth. An IB program will actually make sure that whatever your kids are learning is still at the internationally high rigor uh, and level that um, the rest of the world is meets trying to keep at. international standards and, and for real meets international standards. As a matter yes. of fact, at the end of a two-year program, your, your learners take tests that are scored by people, by teachers from around the world, in The Hague, in Vietnam, in, yeah. you know, all parts of the world. Yeah, and I've met a lot of these through a lot of the IB trainings that mm -hmm. uh, facilitators go through to make sure that we're, you know, providing the best IB experience we can. Um, and I've met people from all over the world who are mm -hmm. teaching the same things I'm teaching, just in a different place. And it's really great. So in addition to these CTE pathways, you're, you're also offering a course of study that's extremely rigorous, the, the, the highest level of uh, of rigor that you can get in high school, basically, that's uh, preparing kids with a, a, a worldly knowledge um, as well as, like I said, the, those high standards. So is this something that, uh, is it kind of another pathway that a, a student would choose instead of a CTE program, or, or can you enroll in both? Well, you could do both. It sort of depends. So you have the opportunity, opportunity to take one to six uh, IB courses mm -hmm. uh, throughout your, your high school. Uh, it's mostly 11th and 12th grade. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to take just one or two and you also want to do a CTE program, that's wonderful. Right now, everybody in our school is taking IB uh, language and literature, which okay. is the, the English program. And everybody is taking IB history of the Americas. So mm -hmm. that's your U.S. history component. And if you take it the second year, you can have the extra IB the exam and the IA and all the things that, that go with that program. Mm -hmm. um, so that really brings up the rigor of our entire school, not just certain selected kids. Sure. But then, of course, there's math and, you know, biology and physics and art and theater and uh, IB Spanish. Mm -hmm. So these are all the different um, classes that you can take. And if you want to do a full international baccalaureate diploma, uh, you would take s six classes – for those two years, and of course, pass all six of those and a couple of other extra things like community service uh, component, um, mm -hmm. extended essay, um, and then you would um, get your international diploma. And that would actually even, uh, if you wanted to go to an international college or university somewhere else, mm -hmm. uh, they really look for kids who have that IB diploma because they know that they're entering uh, freshmen who meet the standards of all the other international or, or local, for them, uh, candidates. Well, it's got to be something that even our local universities look Absolutely. pretty highly on. Yeah, they, uh, universities look at the IB uh, a lot more fondly, I think, even than AP. Mm. Anyone can take AP anywhere, but IB is just such a much more rich and um, uh, higher level uh, of rigor that, mm -hmm. that colleges really are impressed by that. Well, you mentioned something interesting. Anyone can take AP anywhere. I, I, 
a little embarrassed to mention this, but uh, I couldn't. Um, I wanted to take AP history when I was in high school, and I was told that that no, I wasn't qualified for that level of course. I was going to stay in the regular history class, which I loved. It fascinated me, but I wanted I wanted to push myself, but I, my test scores weren't high enough, and I, I didn't have my teacher's recommendation. Is that something that you guys do with the IB program as well? Absolutely not. Any learner at any time can decide to take an IB course. It's self-selected. Okay. So we're never going to tell someone who wants to take on the challenge that mm -hmm. they can't. Okay. Why, why would you do that? That just sounds <laughs> awful, right? If somebody wants to, you know, go for it, mm -hmm. go for a little extra challenge. And maybe, you know, maybe it doesn't work out for them. Maybe they do one year and they don't do the second year. But mm -hmm. at least that that's still that one year looks so much better to colleges. It's basically the honors level. Um, and mm -hmm. I would I would encourage every learner to try to push themselves a little harder, right? Sure. Isn't that what we all want from our kids? Sure. So if a kid who maybe hasn't done so great in the past decides, you know what, I, I really I, I want right, to go to college. To I want to turn that turn over that new leaf. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that is fantastic. So, um, so we've talked about IB. We've talked about CTE and how kids can, can choose uh, pretty much either one of those, uh, either one of those courses. They can, they can fold them over. What else is going on at SCVI? What, uh, what other fun and exciting stuff do you have going on out there? Oh, wow. Now you're really putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did talk about the parent information night a little right, bit earlier. It would be a good, uh, good thing to do. And, and I came in unprepared today, but, uh, but you have the date and time. Um, so for parents that are interested in the upper school specifically, um, when are you guys having that information That night? is Wednesday, February 23rd, so next Wednesday. Next Wednesday. And it is from 6 p.m. Uh, if anybody wants to... Um, I think we put it on the website, right? So there, and then we'll send out a Zoom. There's an RSVP, okay. um, and we'll just, you know, get as much information out at that point as we can. So next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Yeah. And for more information, they can go to iLeadSantaClarita.org or call the front desk at SCVI at 661-705-4820. Easiest thing in the world to do is just Google SCVI, reach out to them. But again, next uh, next Wednesday night at 6 p.m., they've got the. Uh, uh, the upper school information night where you'll be able to meet the amazing Ms. Ingrid Moon Yay. and uh, and her ears and, and all of her colleagues out there. So Ingrid, I, I just want to thank you one more time for, for joining me this morning and, and stopping by. It's always great when I can have someone here in the studio and then you dressed up for me. I know, that, right? It's more so fun to sweet. be here in person. So thanks for having me. <laughs> that is wonderful. And Ingrid, for entertaining my nerdness. Certainly. Ingrid, <laughs> you have a wonderful weekend. Live long and prosper. <laughs> thanks. You this too. is SCBI and I lead schools eye on the valley on your hometown station KHTS. We'll be right back. KHDS strives to give the Santa Clarita Valley all the information they need, and when our computers aren't working the way they should, we call Resurgence, your true source for IT. Resurgence provides outstanding customer service while also providing the highest technical ability. They strive to do what's best to improve and protect your business. For more information on Resurgence, call 349-4114 or visit resurgenceit.com. Experience Frontier Toyota's all-new hot and exciting Toyota lineup. Serving the Santa Clarita Valley for over 30 years. Frontier Toyota, the Camry, Corolla, and Prius Kings. They're tops in Tacoma and Tundra trucks. Frontier Toyota, the new way of car buying. Shop from home at FrontierToyota.com or visit their showroom at Valencia and Creekside. Discover a whole new car buying experience with your friends at Frontier Toyota. Make 2022 a super year at Six Flags Magic Mountain, the thrill capital of the world. Conquer the strength of the mighty Goliath, the bravery of traveling through the dimensions on X2, and the dual power of wood and steel on Twisted Colossus. Cross off adventure on your bucket list and experience unmatched thrills like West Coast Racers, the world's first single track quadruple launch racing coaster, the new Revolution, the world's first 360 degree vertical looping coaster, and full throttle featuring a 160 foot loop 
and first ever top hat, sending riders over the top of the loop. The thrill is calling you to experience the fastest, steepest, and tallest coasters in the world. Visit hometownstation.com for your chance to win free tickets to Six Flags Magic Mountain with KHDS. Get the best deals on tickets and passes when you visit sixflags.com today. Full vaccination or negative COVID test is required on select days. Details at sixflags.com. Nothing like a royal suite to make your dreams come true. It's a Royal Suite Home Furnishings Annual President's Day Parking Lot Sale. With savings up to 70% off their parking lot and 50% off in their entire store. Take advantage of these tremendous savings now through Tuesday. Under the tents, in the parking lot, and in their store. Head over now to a Royal Suite for their complete President's Weekend Home Furnishings Sale. A Royal Suite. Sweet dreams. Tempur-Pedic is not included in the 50% off sale. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 9 o'clock. Time for national news on KHTS. Beginning arrests in Ottawa. I'm Roger Stern, Fox News. Police in Canada's capital have begun arresting truckers who have blocked streets as a protest against COVID vaccine mandates. Fox's Jessica Rosenthal is following that. On Monday, Canada's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau declared a national public order emergency and said of the trucker protests, they cannot allow illegal and dangerous activity to continue. Friday morning, Ottawa police began tweeting that protesters should leave the secure area they'd blocked off around the protest, saying some are already surrendering and being arrested, adding that people could face severe penalties for failing to cease what they called further unlawful activity, including the failure to remove vehicles and property. They have announced the the arrest of Chris Barber, one of the protest organizers, as well as another organizer, Tamara Leach, who was arrested Thursday night. Jessica Rosenthal, Fox News. Here in the U.S., Fox News has learned that Capitol Police in Washington will brief congressional leaders about a potential Ottawa-style truck convoy coming to D.C. As the West fears that a Russian invasion of Ukraine may be only days away, a humanitarian convoy was hit by shelling. Meanwhile, Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Munich, Germany, for a security conference trying to assure allies that they've taken the right steps. I think President Putin's been a little bit surprised at that solidarity, at the way that NATO uh, has come together, the European Union has come together. Vice President Harris is also attending that conference. It's sentencing day for police officer Kim Potter, convicted of manslaughter in the killing of a 20-year-old black man, Dante Wright, near Minneapolis. Potter says she grabbed her pistol by mistake and shot him when she meant to use a taser. She could face 15 years in prison. Prosecutors are asking for no more than eight and a half. America is listening to Fox News. Enrolls you into recurring automated text messages. Message and data rates may apply. If you are a man over 40, listen up because this could impact how much you're getting done during the day and at night. The harsh reality is once you hit 40, your body has less free testosterone. Here's the good news Nugenics, the number one selling testosterone booster at GNC, has changed the game again for men over 40 with Nugenics Total T, their most powerful man boosting formula ever. And guys all over America are raving about it. Jeremy P says, This is the best product I found to raise T levels. I plan on using the product for the rest of my life. And how about Shane D? He says, I had no drive and was tanked out at the end of the day. After three months, my energy level is through the roof. I work out like most 19-year-olds. I am 47. Guys over 40, you need Nugenics Total Tea. And right now, you can get a complimentary bottle. Just text DIG to 42424. It's the number one selling free testosterone booster at GNC. But you can only get your complimentary bottle by texting DIG to 42424. That's D-I-G to 42424. Text DIG to 42424. More disruptions could be coming to Minnesota schools now that teachers have voted to authorize a strike. Fox's Jeff Manasso. Our schools. Teachers in both Minneapolis and St. Paul have overwhelmingly voted in favor of a possible strike after failed negotiations in their demands. That includes smaller class sizes, student resources, and more pay. It doesn't have to be this way, and we're going to do something about it. Minneapolis Teachers Union President Greta Callahan, both districts for now holding off on a decision to strike with additional mediation scheduled, both cash-strapped school districts, saying right now they just don't have the money to meet all of the teachers' demands. 
Jeff Manasso, Fox News. A sad day on Capitol Hill. Minnesota Republican Congressman Jim Hagedorn has died after a battle with kidney cancer. Confirmation coming in a Facebook post by his wife. Hagedorn had followed his father's footsteps into Congress. He was 59. Texas is taking a look at TikTok. State Attorney General Ken Paxton says drug cartels may be using the video sharing app to recruit people to smuggle drugs and migrants over the Mexican border. They supposedly are, are recruiting uh, teenagers through TikTok and uh, the cartels and using it to smuggle people, drugs. Paxton speaking on Mornings with Maria on the Fox Business Network. It's a big day for NASA, as Fox's Carmen Roberts explains. One year ago Friday, the Perseverance rover touched down on Mars. Safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory are celebrating the one-year anniversary of the life-seeking Perseverance rover and its little helicopter called Ingenuity and their amazing discovery. I'm Roger Stern, Fox News. I'm Jerry Willis, and this is the Fox Business Report. The situation in Ukraine continues to be the focus for investors, though various Fed officials are speaking today about the economy. Roku shares are losing ground after it warned of continued supply chain disruptions. In addition to streaming, its technology is also in televisions. Gambling business DraftKings continues to lose money, though its quarter was stronger than forecast. Deer is gaining after making a profit in the recent quarter. Selenese is buying a majority of DuPont's mobility and materials business. Coca-Cola will launch its first limited edition beverage next week. It's Star light reddish in color which the company says will be reminiscent of stargazing around a campfire that's your fox business report i'm jitty cosola invested in you inflation just broke a nearly 40-year record thanks to biden's out of control spending and every second you are losing more of your hard-earned savings but you can fight back with a gold IRA from Birch Gold. You can protect your retirement from this outright theft. Hi, this is Stephen K. Bannon, and I'm one of the Birch Gold's many happy customers. To learn how to set up your own gold IRA, text the word SHELTER to 989898. Do it now, today. Text SHELTER to 989898. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220, Canyon Country, California, K260CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California. With locations throughout the valley, Providence offers the most advanced technology and therapies for treating cancer in Southern California. Call 1-888-HEALING for your annual checkup or second opinion. The road to healing leads to Providence. Airlines have just reduced their prices even more. Book 30 days in advance and save big. Want the absolute lowest prices on your airline tickets? Then call the low-cost airlines travel hotline right now. For prices so low, we can publish them anywhere. The only way to access our low rates and save up to 70% is to call. Save hundreds on your vacation tickets by calling right now. You can fly anywhere in the world and pay discount prices on your your airline tickets. Book a flight today to London, Paris, Madrid, or anywhere else you want to go and pay a lot less guaranteed. Call the International Travel Department right now at Low Cost Airlines. 810-214-4273. 810-214-4273. 810-214-4273. That's 810-214-4273. No contract pest control. Did you hear that? Yes, Unipest has no contract, low-impact, affordable, and environmentally and family-friendly pest control options with orange oil or other family-friendly products. Whether it's ants, spiders, gophers, termites, or bed bugs, Unipest Termite and Pest Control has an effective, eco-friendly option for you. Call Unipest today for a free orange oil inspection at 661-BUG-7575 or visit unipest.com. <laughs> 
The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is Matt Watson, your host, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. We are coming to you live from the KTS, KHTS studios here at the center of Main Street in beautiful downtown Newhall. So, uh, yeah, the last few weeks we've, we've kind of been sportsing it up a little bit, but, you know, when you've got the Super Bowl in your town and the hometown heroes are on a tear and, and, and just hometown run heroes. it through. <laughs> oh, you're a Pittsburgh fan. I am a Pittsburgh fan, but you know what? There's something about exciting about having the Super Bowl in your town and having your hometown team win that same Super Bowl in the cathedral that they built. There's something exciting about it. So, yeah, we're going to talk sports a little bit. But I promise you, I, I tell you what, I'll make this commitment to you if you're not a sports person. No sports next week, but but this week we got a debrief. We got a debrief. <laughs> we, we mentioned at the top of the show, Patty, you, you picked the Rams three – you picked against the Rams three times in a row. Yep. And, and you're still picking them to lose this year's Super Bowl, meaning – They're not even going to make it to the next year's Super Bowl. I'm not what talking about talking? next year. You're still picking against oh. them in last week's Super Bowl. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still – no, still. All right. So any, <laughs> any thoughts? First of all, let's just say kudos because anytime you have a Super Bowl that's actually a good game – you, you this was celebrate. a good game. No, this this was a, actually a good Super Bowl, like for the sake of like an actual game. Yep. Wasn't like it wasn't a blowout, or it wasn't like a like low scoring like three zip type Super Bowl where it's like that's like that's defense, but dear lord, that's yeah. not exciting. Yeah. Well, no, but uh, hey, let's let's give it up to to the Rams defensive line Ed, when when their backs were up against the wall. Boy, did they take off on on poor Joe Burrow. I, I think bah humbug. That, <laughs> that, that poor guy got sacked more no. times in the playoffs than I'm, I think some quarterbacks get sacked all season. Get that man some help. Oh, get him an offensive line. My Lord, those toreros that the, the play offensive line for him, shouting ole on every single play is just, <laughs> just terrible. Oh. Um, but oh. uh, but yeah, so the Rams win in, in their their brand new stadium. They hoist the Lombardi Trophy. And then, you know, they, they go to Disneyland, and they have the victory parade on Wednesday. And all three of their fans <laughs> came in there. That was great well, for those three people. The country has kind of <laughs> criticized the L.A. Rams fan a little bit for their for, for their lack of showing up. Um, and I did hear a couple of reasons for it. I heard somebody say yesterday, you know, what do you expect? This is Los Angeles. And it was a, a bristling cold 61 degrees out there. Ooh. So you can't expect LA, LA fans to get out there in the, Ooh. in the cold. It, it uh-huh. was it, certainly not the 2 million people that we saw uh, a few years back when Kobe and the Lakers won the, the championship. Of course, Lakers nor the Dodgers, neither one of them got their victory parade in their most recent championship. True, that is very true. In 2020. Um, it, it was kind of interesting. It's, it's always fun to see the guys with their helmets off and, and doing what they do. You get to see a little bit more of their personality. I think we saw a little bit extra Matthew Stafford personality. <laughs> but, you know, oh, yep. there will be some things that, that, that loosen loosen your character up a little bit. Um, but we, we got to see, uh, well, gosh, let's just talk about the, the T-shirts that the guys were or, or weren't wearing Right, so <laughs> well, Aaron uh, Donald was shirtless. Superstar, yeah. yeah. Well, Aaron Donald took off his shirt, and it looked like he was still wearing his shoulder. <laughs> I didn't know. I mean, he looks it, like the Incredible Hulk. Like it's like, dude, you're just like you are just beef. That is incredible. If, if, beef. if you haven't, and 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 it's not a it's not a beefcake photograph, but Google um, uh, Aaron Donald parade or Aaron no, he, Donald. He looks shirt. like a man amongst men. You can see how he's able to take someone who outweighs him by 80, <laughs> 90 pounds and just throw them aside and sack the quarterback. Like I just look at that and I just like I'm just like oh like I'm six foot and I feel like I'd be like an ant next to him. Yeah. Um and then Cooper Cup, uh he uh he was wearing a Kobe jersey, Kobe Bryant jersey. I thought that was kind of cool. Um <laughs> love you Kobe. Interestingly, the, the, the mayor of Inglewood, because, you know, SoFi Stadium, the Rams Stadium is in Inglewood. Of course. The mayor of Inglewood was out there celebrating with him. Did you see his jersey? 
No, what was his jersey? I didn't. He was watch wearing a Rams game. jersey. Uh huh. He was wearing a, a St. Louis Rams jersey, was so I thought that was interesting. Interesting. A St. Louis Rams jersey. Interesting. And he was referring to the Rams as the Los Angeles Rams of Inglewood. So he's, he's doing his best to uh, to claim the team as his own. I, I thought that was interesting. And then, did you see Les Snead? He's the general manager of the yeah. Rams. Yeah. He Les Snead. Uh, he's a good looking guy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, and he had a picture of a good looking guy on his T-shirt. Uh huh. Himself. No. Yep. It, it 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 really takes uh, uh, some confidence to uh, to go to a Super Bowl victory parade wearing a T-shirt of yourself. And uh, since these are public airwaves that we're on, I'm not going to mention what the T-shirt says. Um, but you can Google it if you want. But yeah, Les Snead wearing his Les Snead t-shirt was was brilliant now um mm-hmm. there was uh, the, the parade wasn't all fun and games you know for for the the dozens and dozens of fans that turned out to watch it um <laughs> did you see patty what happened toward the end of the parade they get the, to the final destination they're up on stage and they're yeah with the photographer imbibing right? and, mm-hmm. and and yeah and and uh you know the the hero and the quarterback Matthew Stafford and his wife Kelly are there on stage and yeah and taking a picture um you know right there at the end of the stage yeah and if you didn't see it you can check it out on Twitter it it caused quite the scandal it was the uh, well let's just call it uh, it might have been the climax of the story might have been the uh, the oh my goodness what's gonna happen next part yeah. of the parade story yeah because as this photographer stepped in to take a picture of quarterback Matthew Stafford and his wife. She took one too many steps backwards. Yep, and, and took a tumble um, very tragically off uh, off of the stage. And um, you know, it, it's not just the regular. You know, what was it? Bean from Kevin and Bean falling off the stage and, yeah. and bumping himself. Uh, she uh, she broke, I, I believe, a vertebrae. She broke her back. Yep, and, and she's in the hospital. And uh, and we wish her all the best. Yeah, that's but absolutely terrible. The, it, it is terrible, and unfortunately, that's that wasn't the newsworthy no. part of, of that uh, of that scene. Um, you know, because as you're taking your picture, you're obviously looking at the camera, right? And when she falls backwards, you know, Matthew Stafford's reaction was kind of drawing some criticism. Yeah, right? I he, saw that too. That's not a good look. Yeah, at least no. his wife. His wife actually like. You know, uh, uh, Kelly? I think yes, Kelly said. yes. And both of she, them had the same went. initial reaction. Oh, yeah. my gosh. But Kelly went. She's like, Kelly okay, went to the edge down. of the stage and got some help for her. Yeah. Matthew Stafford immediately just turned heel and walked away. Yeah. Just, oops, I don't want to be here. Yep. And he walked away. Yeah. Um, no, no one's expecting him to jump the 20 feet down to rescue her. Right. But you'd think that the Super Bowl winning quarterback could probably garner a little bit of attention, yeah. get her some medical attention pretty quickly. Yeah. Not a good look for them. However, sounds like this morning um, there's at least somewhat of a resolution to, to that, uh, that what sounded like a pretty bad story. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you hear the Staffords have stepped up and they have committed to – to paying for the photographer's medical bills. Yes, I heard. I heard of the Staffords so, and, and also news. the Rams too. We're, the, the, we're, the Rams have stepped. It was both. There's also a GoFundMe out there that folks are, are, are yeah. pouring money into. So at least monetarily, she's gonna she's gonna be okay. But still, broken back. That's ouch, tragic, man. And, and and if you're an artist, something I get that it doesn't compare, but still tragic. Broke her camera. Um, yeah. I know, I know, but uh, oof, but yeah, she she took a real tumble. Um, but uh, we, we wish her well. Hope that she's going to be okay. Um, but, yeah, not a good look for, for Matthew Stafford. No, not. no, not on the heels of, of winning a Super Bowl, too. So it's like, ooh, Not a good look. Um, but, yeah, I, I, we joke about the size of the crowd. There there were a few thousand folks out there. They estimate there were. <laughs> between fifteen and 20,000, which is nice, you know, for the fans to go out there. Let's face it, it it's kind of tough because – some of the LA fans felt betrayed when they they moved back to St. Louis, and uh, well, they also had other teams. In, right, in Los Angeles is a cesspool of differing teams. I'm a Seahawks fan. A cesspool. You're a Pittsburgh. Wow. A cesspool. Well, well, it's, you, it, you know, right. well, a cesspool. Like it's it's different. Well, we went so long without a team that a lot yeah. of us adopted teams from around the country. Yeah. A lot of folks have moved to LA from other parts of the country, stay loyal to their team. And, you know, let's face it, it's not like the Lakers and Dodgers where I grew up watching the Lakers with my dad and he passed it on to me. And, 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 you know, my grandfather is the one that chose UCLA over USC. Exactly. Exactly. Generations of fandom. When you go away for that long, you you lose that generational fandom oftentimes. Exactly. 
it, it takes more than one Super Bowl to, to build that back up. But yeah, 15, 20,000 doesn't compare with even the half a million. 500,000 people. For like Lakers and Dodgers. For the LA Kings. Oh, the LA that's Kings right. Half a million. That's true. So That is true. So yeah, it was... Uh, I, I don't know if they could have done something different than a parade. Maybe a rally at the Coliseum or... A rally at the Coliseum like probably that. would have been a little bit more uh, on, on point for how they would do things. Just because it's... That's probably a better collective. But yes, yeah. Yeah. It would have looked a little bit bigger. Yep. Well, uh, so yeah, congratulations, <laughs> Rams. Congratulations, Ram fans. I know you're out there. Um, Christine, as a matter of fact, shout out to you. She's been a huge Ram fan for many, many, many years. And, and so we do say congratulations and, and well done, even though, Patty, you know, you and I are fans of other teams that will hopefully step up and do a little bit better next year. But uh, just love the competition. Love the Super Bowl. <laughs> love – oh, what? What? I can't. I was about to cut the commercial, but what about the halftime show? Oh, Did it was you enjoy amazing, it? man. Did you remember any of those songs? Yes. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. We joke about me not knowing yeah. songs on and off at the station, everybody. Mm-hmm. Rap is one I do absolutely know. This is, that's my element. Okay. Rap music's my element. So no, gotcha. every single song I had chills. Okay. When I heard Lose Yourself, like the first two beats of that doom, I li- doom, 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 oh, doom. there I, we go like yeah. me and my sister literally were jumping up we're like we literally had the rap on point there we the go house. OG engineer Patty getting hype <laughs> very cool all right so now I loved it that that's you know that's my music and and just I went nuts I thought it was one of the greatest Super Bowl halftime shows ever maybe even number two for those of you out there saying it was the best ever no, you didn't forget about Dre, but did you forget about Prince singing Purple Rain in the driving rain? Come on. Um, but yeah, amazing show. It was um, amazing. Uh, Dr. Dre, who, um, who who put it on, he produced the whole thing. Yeah. He, he financed the whole thing. Like, they didn't get paid. They paid to put that show on. Yeah. Um, and did an amazing job. It was Best halftime fantastic. show I've ever seen in my life. Absolutely. So once again, congratulations to the Rams. We wish our best. To gosh, I wish I had her name pulled up. Uh, the young lady who uh, who was injured in the in the parade, that mm-hmm. photographer there. But uh, but yeah, way to go, Rams. We're gonna go ahead and take a, a quick break. When we come back, we'll be speaking with the new executive director at Bridge to Home. Bridge to Home is doing just amazing things in and for our community, and and we're so excited that they're gonna be joining us. We will be right back. I am Matt Watson. You're listening to SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. SCVI is a tuition-free TK through 12 charter school that gives your child boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely. We offer a customized learning program built around your child's unique interests and strengths with the only international baccalaureate program in all of Santa Clarita. Our approach keeps students and families in step no matter where your learning is taking place. Be empowered to make your mark on the world at SCVI. To take a tour or enroll now in our one-of-a-kind program, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. Healthcare can be difficult if you're underinsured or have Medi-Cal. Samuel Dixon Family Health Center can help. Services are available on a sliding fee schedule. The mission of the Samuel Dixon Family Health Center is to give the Santa Clarita Valley access to affordable, quality primary care. There are three locations to serve you, Canyon Country, Newhall, and Valverde. Go to sdfhc.org for more information and to find the location most convenient for you. No words can describe the power of belonging to a group of close friends or being part of a family. Insight Treatment Center was founded more than 20 years ago to give teenagers a community of friends and family as they overcome issues like depression, anxiety, and trauma. The new Santa Clarita location is a COVID-secure environment where distance and good airflow are a priority. As a leader in providing intensive outpatient treatment to teenagers, Insight Treatment Center in Santa Clarita is here to help. Call 888-295-9995 or go online to insighttreatment.com. No doubt about it, L.A. is an awesome place to live. But even while living in the land of beaches and mountains, it's safe to say that we could all use a real vacation right about now. One where you don't have to stop for gas, cook your own meals, or strip your own sheets. Lucky for us, Princess Cruises has a port right here in L.A. Now, for a limited time, L.A. residents can sail with Princess from just $89 per day to the beaches of Mexico. 
the tropics of Hawaii or cruise along the California coast without getting stuck in traffic. That's right, just $89 per day. And while these great destinations aren't going anywhere, these deals won't be around forever. So visit princess.com, call 1-800-PRINCESS, or contact your travel advisor to book your cruise today. Set sail with LA's Cruise Line, Princess Cruises. Terms and restrictions apply. Promotional pricing ends November 30th, 2021. Ships are Bermuda and British Registry. Before booking, consult the CDC website at www.cdc.gov. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station. 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson. And my guest joining me now is the new executive director at Bridge to Home. Do you know Bridge to Home? They're doing some some very difficult and very important work in our community. Chris Naharo earned her bachelor's degree in sociology from CSUN. What, what? She's a matador. And she received her master's degree in social work from USC. She's worked in the nonprofit sector for most of her life. Previously, Chris was with the Child Resource Center for 10 years, where she managed the CalWORKs Stage 1 department, providing child care subsidies for families. She was the executive director of Family Promise for about six years, and then transitioned to become the director of programs for Bridge to Home in 2017. And she was recently announced as the new executive director of Bridge to Home here just a couple of months ago. Chris Naharo, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. We really appreciate you, and we appreciate everything that uh, uh, that you do for and in our community. So for our listeners who aren't as familiar with Bridge to Home and your work, um, can you tell us a little bit about the services that you provide for, for people experiencing homelessness? Sure. We are the lead homeless organization here in the Santa Clarita Valley. We um, assist both individuals and families um, that are experiencing homelessness or will be homeless um, shortly, like maybe in two weeks um, out from and knowing that they're going to be homeless. And we have 60 shelter beds for single individuals, um, 40 for men, 20 for women, um, And then in that program, we provide a robust um, volunteer um, opportunities. And um, through our volunteers, we also provide um, several activities to help the individuals that are staying in our shelter um, get motivated and return back into the community with more uh, life skills and also to work on their mental health health state and um, to, to tend to like uh, substance use disorders and things like that. In addition, we also have case management services that focuses on getting families and individuals um, housed. And um, through those through those um, programs, we you know assist with transportation um, to and from work um, or to appointments. We you know content, we help families and individuals link themselves to services, whether that be general relief, you know, some cash aid or child care or um, food services, um, and and then ultimately the goal being getting them back into their own um, housing. And then we also provide domestic violence services and um, clinical services here. Gosh, that's, that's so important. You guys really have the full wraparound services. It's not just a a bed for the night, although that is extremely important. You're providing all those services to do, well, exactly what your organization's na- name says, right? To bridge folks back into a full-time home. And that's so important, and, and it's it's uh, it's work that uh, really takes a lot of dedication. Now, you guys have some pretty exciting news coming up. There's a, there's a groundbreaking coming up soon. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so our groundbreaking is on March 14th at 1030, and it is open to the public. There's going to be some press releases out there. They might have already gone out, and um, 
And then there's going to be social media um, push for it, so people are welcome to come by. Um, right now we are at a temporary site here in New Hall on Pine Street, but our permanent site where, um, is on Drayton in, in New Hall, and um, that is where, you know, the whole the, the goal for many years was to make that our permanent site, and we are finally at the stage where we are going to be breaking ground and building a, a facility, 18,000 square feet facility to house our um, 60 clients and the, the staff and volunteers that help with the services that go on there. Um, so we're really excited about that because, you know, it's a long time coming and it's going to have, um, it's going to be a state-of-the-art building with training rooms and, you know, showers that are indoors. Right now we have showers that are mobile showers, um, so clients will not have to uh, be subjected to walking out in the cold or in the heat. Everything's going to be indoors, which is seems very um, simple, but for us, it's something that we've been dreaming about for many years. And this is a community effort. You know, it's not just Bridge to Home that's been working on this. We have so many um, community members that have been working with us to make this dream happen. They've been, you know, spending their time envisioning and helping us put together these um, these. Uh, programs and and, um, and the actual site itself, and then also, you know, donating money and spending time with us um, in, in creating this dream. Wow, that, that sounds phenomenal. 18,000 square feet. You're going to have the space to deliver all those incredible services that you just talked about. We're talking with Chris Naharo, Executive Director of Bridge to Home, helping out the folks here in Santa Clarita that are experiencing homelessness. So you're breaking ground on March 14th. You mentioned that the public can go. That'll be an exciting event for, for folks to get out to. Now, how long do you guys estimate it'll take to build this building, Chris? We think it'll take about a year and a half. Um, you know, that's the goal. We hope to be um, having that ribbon cutting ceremony sometime in the summer of next uh, of 2023. That's the, the hope, you know, and the goal. So we'll see how it all pans out at, in the next year. Sure, sure, absolutely. Gosh, if there's one thing the last couple of years has taught us, you, you know, you never know what's going to be happening exactly. next. Exactly, yeah. But the great thing is you've got that temporary facility. You can continue to provide all the amazing services for folks experiencing homelessness like you do until this new building is, is ready. But it is still very, uh, very exciting. Now, there's, there's been a lot of news lately about the increase in people experiencing homelessness here in the Southland. And, and I seem to notice a, an uptick myself here in Santa Clarita. Maybe that's just because I've finally gotten out of my hovel. But uh, do you know why this seems to be on the rise? Yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's no easy answer to that. And I get asked that quite often. I always have, you know, been working in homeless services for quite some time now. And there's not an easy answer. And when you work with these individuals or these families, every, everyone's story is very different. There's similarities, but that last thing that caused them to go into um, homelessness is typically a, a lack of support system. Um, and it may be from different types of, um, you know, like support systems that, that are lacking something. So, like, you know, some... Some, family, some people do have family or friends, but they can't take on another person or another family into their home because maybe their lease doesn't allow it or there's no additional space for them to stay or how long is that stay going to be. Some people just don't have family or friends in the area or, um, you know, and, I, and every, it's very different. They're, you know, I always give the example of myself. Like, I have a large family and a, and a solid group of friends that if something like this were to happen to me, I'd be able to turn to so many different people. And maybe if I, you know, overstayed my welcome with one, I could go to another, right? It would right. take a long time for me to, to finally need the services, these types of services. But there's that's not the story for many of these people. Um, so, you know, whether they, what's caused them to get to this point is maybe mental health or or uh, substance use or a loss of a job or, you know, many different factors. The final um, cause is that lack of support system. And then that's when we step in. We become that support system. We become the, the people, that, the, the organization, the people that, that really try to provide them with their needs and get them back on their feet and back into their own home. 
um, and you know we even help with their subsidies for either a limited amount of time or indefinite amount of time depending on the the programs that they're enrolled in sure gosh as you're talking I'm thinking about my uh, support network and I don't know what I would do without you know my friends and family and if if folks don't have that you guys are able to step in and, and be that support network that's that's amazing. Chris, you said you've been working in homelessness services uh, for a while now. What do you like most about about the work that you do with Bridge to Home? With Bridge to Home, I absolutely love my team. I think that they're so great, and um, they are the reason for our success um, and the reason we make a difference in, in so many people's lives on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I love to see their passion. I love to see them... Um, working and making these connections with um, their clients and residents. Um, you know, our shelter has a, a really great team that invests so much of their time in in getting to know the residents that are staying at our shelter, and they make a genuine connection with them, and they want to see them succeed, and then they do what they can to get them, you know, reach their goals, reach their potential, um, get motivated. And then our key managers do the same thing. And even our administrative staff, you know, they are working to deliver the mission. And so when we see that one person get housed on a Tuesday, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a success for all of us. You know, it, it really does take a, a team effort. Everybody puts together their resources and um, motivates one another to get out there and do this because we all have um, the same goal in mind, which is to, you know, to make a difference in people's lives and get them out of homelessness and back into their own home. Gosh, what a great answer. You, you know, we were just talking about the Rams winning the Super Bowl. You remind me of quarterback Matthew Stafford. You're a great quarterback, too. <laughs> when I asked what you love most, you referred to your team just like he did. That is, that is phenomenal. Now, you guys are doing some really hard work, right? It, it's not easy to, to help folks ex experiencing homelessness uh, get things turned around and, and back into a home. But it's also not cheap work, right? Where does your funding mm -hmm. come from, Chris? So our funding, you know, comes from a, a variety of different places. We mm -hmm. obviously go out after grants and, and hopefully get funded through, you know, private grants. But we also have public grants that come from, like, the state of California, um, LASA, which is the a, a main um, organization here in Los Angeles County that funds many of our programs for a lot of organizations that do similar work um, like Bridge to Home in this county. Um, the County of Los Angeles um, provides funding through different sources of, um, you know, Supervisor Barger's office provides us funding and so does Department of Health Services. Um, we have a partnership with the lead organization for this for the San Fernando and San, Santa Clarita area for homelessness, um, LA Family Housing. Um, so we, you know, it's a lot of that sort sort of funding um, that we, things that make sense for us and go after and, and we want to work on and, and it's all linked to homelessness directly, then that's the money that we, we go out and, and do some research and apply for. And then, of course, our, our private donors that, that donate on a regular basis and believe in our mission, and they, they also give to us as an organization, and we couldn't do it without them. So, And whether it's um, financial donations or if it's in-kind donations, it all goes a long way. You know, our community here in Santa Clarita really is such a generous community and, and always looking to, to help out those that need it the most. So if, if somebody's listening and they're interested in a, in a one-time donation or uh, a monthly donation, how can folks, uh, can folks do that? Do you have a, a donation button on your website or something like that? We do. We do. They could just find us online. Um, be it, be to home, um, dot org is our, our website. Um, and two is T O not the number two. It's often confused. And um, B is the, uh, the letter B, right? The B is the letter B for bridge okay. and two T O and home. Dot org. And then, you know, our, web, our, our social media sites can link you to our, our website as well. Fantastic. And I see our producer, Sarah, has dropped that link in the Facebook Live feed. So if you're on Facebook Live, you can just click right there. Again, it's the letter B, T-O, home.org, bridge to home.org. And then, you know, there's so many folks that are, are willing to, to give, which is, is amazing. But there's other folks that are willing to, to roll up their sleeves and, 
and, and get their hands dirty? Do you do you take volunteers? Do can people help out that way? Yes, of course. We we love um, to have volunteers participate in our our mission as well. We, that's how the organization started. We were a volunteer organization back when it first opened its doors. So we continue to. Um, to put a lot of value and believe in the work of volunteers. We couldn't do it without them. So volunteering, we have a volunteer coordinator um, who takes care of that, and if somebody wants to donate a meal or serve a meal, come into our offices and help in any way, then they can definitely um, do that in, in several ways. What a great way to be that outstretched hand to, to help somebody else uh, step up and and make that transition. Bridge to Home, you guys are doing amazing things to help support uh, individuals experiencing homelessness in our community. Chris, we want to thank you for joining us today. God bless you and your team. Y'all are doing great things. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. It's our pleasure. Please, you take care and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. You too. This is SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. I'm Matt Watson, and this is your on your hometown station, KHTS. Stick around. We're going to have a little bit of fun. At Discovery Cube Los Angeles, every day is an adventure. LA's newest science center brings education to life and lets guests climb a rock wall, soar over California in a simulated helicopter, and score a goal against an LA Kings hockey player. It's like a theme park for the mind. Sign up now for their brand new STEM club every Saturday starting in March. From learning about animals to exploring space and robots, the STEM club will engage kids of all ages. At Discovery Cube Los Angeles, get your tickets now at discoverycube.org. It's Murder, Mystery, and Mayhem at the Canyon Theater Guild. Usher in the new year with laughter and mystery at the hilarious comedy whodunit Clue on Stage. Was it Miss Scarlet in the kitchen with the wrench? Perhaps it was Mr. Green in the billiard room with the rope. Only one way to find out. Based on the popular board game and adapted from the cult classic film, Clue on Stage will keep audiences guessing and laughing to the very end. Get your tickets by calling 661-799-2702 or online at canyontheater.org. Welcome to Dunkin', where you can always try something new, like the brown sugar oat iced latte, made with oat milk. How about a winter blend? Hotter iced coffee, only $2 until February 1st. If you're hungry, try the new omelet bites, bacon and cheddar, or egg white and veggies. Use the Dunkin' app, earn points, and get rewards. Dunkin' has two locations in the SCV, Bouquet Canyon with curbside pickup and delivery, or try the Canyon Country drive through Santa Clarita runs on Dunkin'. When you think about your next place, maybe even your forever place, are you hearing more of this and less of this? Introducing Five Point Valencia, a vibrant new community coming to the Santa Clarita Valley, a place with parks, trails, and fresh architecture, all tuned to the way people want to live today. New homes for all, with prices to match, from the low 400,000s to over a million. Learn more at valencia.com. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson, and I would like to welcome to the show the amazing producer, Sarah. Sarah, how are you this morning? I'm wonderful, Matt. Great show today. You put together another fantastic one. Thank you so much. So, Sarah, I'd love to sit and it's chat with you, but but you know what time it is. I know. I know. Uh, it, is, it is time for Big T's Five Minutes of Fame, and as a matter of fact, uh, by special request, Papa requested that we give Big T a little bit more of a runway today, so he's going to get to come in and, and spread out. Y'all know Big T, right? Have you, heard, uh, have you heard of Big T? He's a longtime resident and leader in the Santa Clarita Valley. He, he's an executive and a philanthropist. He's an amazing father, husband, and community leader. He's also a man who has Vincent Van Gogh's ear for music. Here he is. He's mom's favorite. Big T, welcome to the show. <laughs> Morning, brother man. How are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Now, now, Big T, you often travel a lot. In fact, you call uh, from a lot of different remote locations. Where are you at this morning? 
I'm actually in Santa Clarita. I flew in last night from the Carolinas, but I'm in Santa Clarita today. All right. Well, welcome home. Welcome home. So you're 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 home with uh, with the wife and and the puppies. Um, hey, yes, sir. Where's Duke? Duke. Hold on. Let me check. He's right over there. All right. All right. <laughs> Love me some Duke. All righty. All right. So so we're gonna play a little bit of trivia. You've got some fun for us, and and if you're listening, you can play along at home or or even in your car. Here's the rules. Here's what we're going to do. We've got producer Sarah. She's going to be playing with us, Big T. And then, uh, you know, Patty and me, we're going to hit our buzzers in the form of, of calling out our name. And, and so I'm going to go by Frogger just because, you know, so that you can hear the difference between me and, and Patty. Those of you playing along at home, you don't have to hit your buzzers. You just shout out the answer when you hear it. That'll give you a little bit of an advantage. And uh, y'all keep score at home. I'll be keeping score here in the studio. So, uh, Big T, what have you got for us? So, Matt, normally I have a Papa's trivia question, right? I'm going to change that a little bit today because I don't have any uh, any sports trivia for Papa, oh, no. but I do have Big T's fun fact that Papa is going to challenge the accuracy of. Okay? Wait, wait, wait. wait. So, do you get fact-checked on this show? Hmm. Yeah, Big T gets fact-checked by Papa. Oh, no. Okay, so so here's here's <laughs> Papa's fact-check question or fun fact of the day. All right. <laughs> Absolutely. So piracy, Matt, has been a problem for centuries, right? For hundreds Did of years, that- baby. Hundreds of years, baby. Did you know that Julius Caesar was once a victim of piracy? Get out. Yes, so at about the age of 25, he was captured by some Sicilian pirates, and he was held for ransom. They didn't know who they had, and they set the ransom at what would be present day about (laughs) $100,000. Caesar said, that's not enough. Bump that up to about two fifty. dollars Shut up. They they increased the ransom, right? (laughs) He told them to increase the ransom. Yeah. During, during the time he was with the Pirates, they gained respect for him and his captain skills. He also bossed them around, talked back to them, and prior to leaving the ship, because they did pay the ransom, and prior to leaving the ship, Caesar told them, you know I'm going to have to come back and kill you all. Well, in just 38 days, he chartered a boat, and he went out there, he captured them all, brought them back, and killed each and every one of them, and recouped the 250000 Nicely done. <laughs> oh, oh. Sounds like I'm a G. Now. I'm the captain now. I'm amazed that they didn't recognize the haircut. Right? Oh, <laughs> boy. Wow. <clears throat> All right, ready for some uh, trivia? We, we're, we're ready, yeah. We got, we got a little bit of Olympic trivia. We got some pop culture trivia. So um, which, which country did the Olympics originate in? Frogger. Sarah. Frogger than Sarah. Greece. Frog, are you there? Yeah, I, I said Greece. Oh, I didn't hear it. Sorry, I cut it out. Yeah. So Greece is correct. Yay! Yay. The, mo- <laughs> the motto of the Olympics, what does Cypius, Alpius, Fortuus mean in English? Frogger. Frogger. Bigger, faster, stronger. Harder, better, faster, stronger. I, I got I got two of those. I got, I got faster and I got stronger. What was your third, Frogger? I think I said better, and I think I'm wrong. Incorrect. All right. I got nothing. You got two of them already, Patty. Come on. <laughs> I just I just quoted Kanye West's song. Producer Sarah. Uh Conquer? No, he correct. It's it's faster, higher, and stronger. Higher is the one I missed. All right. <laughs> what what colors are the Olympic rings? Sarah. Sarah. All right, we've got red, yellow. Okay. Correct. Green. Yep. Black and yep. blue. That is correct. Nice pull. Good job. I didn't think you'd get Olymp- black. Okay. What does the Olympic rings represent? Frogger. Sarah. Frogger. Rhythmic gymnastics. <laughs> Incorrect. <laughs> Sarah. I'm going to say the uh, five continents that participated when once upon a time. That, now there's more than that, but. That is correct. That is correct. Fantastic. Well Which done. country has hosted the most Olympic games? Frogger. Frogger. The United States. That is correct. Yay. What city Ooh. has hosted the Olympics three times? Sarah. Sarah. Oh. Hosted. Oh. I'm going to say, because I was going to say something else. I'm going to say London. That is correct. Whoa. This conference is now locked. Uh-oh, our conference is boys locked. Bus. The third time the Olymp- for Los Angeles is coming up, and I am so excited about it. So <laughs> Me too. Absolutely. Me too. Boy, you thought traffic this weekend was bad. Yep. Hey, the Olympics were held to honor which Greek god? 
Frogger. Frogger. Zeus. Zeus is correct. Yay. <laughs> All right, stepping away from Olympics into some pop culture trivia. All right. What toppings are on a Hawaiian pizza? Frogger. Frogger. Some unnecessary ones. <laughs> I agree. Um, so, so let me go stop with. Stop making that face. That's good stuff. Right? No, it's not. Fruit does not belong on pizza, <laughs> but I believe it's Canadian bacon and pineapple. That is correct. All righty, and thank you for producer Sarah correcting me on the score. Currently, we are at four to three. Frogger's in the lead. Patty, uh, is your button working? I know nothing about the Olympics, okay. man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's a sports thing. <laughs> I know. All right, Patty. This, Patty. This one's you. Yes. What is Tony Stark's favorite band? <laughs> Patty. <laughs> AC DC for the win, sir. <laughs> that is correct, AC DC. <laughs> what are the names of Barack Obama's children? Oh, uh, oh. Sarah. She, Sarah. Just who? Sasha and Malia. That is correct. How many years are there in a century? Frogger. Frogger. One hundred. Hundred is correct. Who's our current pope? Frogger. The. Nobody. <laughs> no, let's go. Sarah? No, let's go with Benedict. Sarah. Benedict Arnold. I was gonna go with Francis. No, Jorge Mario. Oh. Oh, All right. What, wow. What is the name of Santa Clarita's current mayor? Oh. Sarah. <laughs> um, I, I got Sarah first. Go for it. Uh, currently is Loreen West. Did it switch? Lorene West. As of December. <laughs> As of yeah. December, that is correct. Yes. Okay, I've got, I've got an old stat. That is correct. Are you still What's looking at Bill Miranda? Is... Yes. Who's no, fact check no. Me? It's... no, no, no. <laughs> yes. Papa, can we get a fact check on that? Is it Lorene West? <laughs> Papa I'll, says yes. I'll my shot at the beginning. <laughs> Papa says yes. <laughs> she was at the dais, the last city council <laughs> meeting. So correct. unless something changed in the last week, she that is our mayor. No. no. That, that is, is correct. correct. I've got a question that's like about a month old. Yep. <laughs> uh, what is the name of uh, the city of Santa Clarita's current city manager? Frogger. Sarah? Sarah. Ken Striplin. That is correct. Right, Patty, you ready to play again? Yeah. <laughs> Very. N- name, the two cities, name the two cities where the movie Home Alone took place. Frogger. Frogger. Chicago and Paris. No. What? Patty. Uh, Paris and New York? Patty. Paris and New York? Correct. Yay. Huh. New York and Chicago. Get, I have it. Oh. oh, okay. Sorry, I jumped in early. New York and yeah, Chicago. Fine. New York and Chicago. Oh, I think you said correct. He said incorrect. Papa, you got some homework to do. <laughs> How many Spice Girls were there? Frogger. Frogger. Oregano and Thyme. <laughs> five. I, I, five is correct. All right. What creepy TV show took over Netflix between 2010 and 2017? Frogger. Frogger. Oh, 2010 and 2017. Patty? I was going to say Stranger Things, but no, that's too early. No, Stranger Things is correct. Oh, yay. That's creepy. Yay. Oh, it's what, very what creepy. Black Panther, I've seen it. That's creepy. What Black Panther star died in early Patty, age? Oh. Patty, Patty, Aww. Patty. Rest, rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Rest in peace. That's correct. What was his best movie? <laughs> Frogger. Black Panther. Frogger. 42? 42 is correct. Yeah. Sorry, Patty. <laughs> Jackie Robinson, come on. How many, Harry, how many Harry Potter movies are there? Patty. <laughs> Patty. There's eight because it's part one and part two. It's realistically it's seven, though, but it's eight because it's part one and part You're two. You going with seven or seven? And eight, or it's seven eight. Or eight. It's eight movies because it's eight okay. separate movies, but one's a part one and two. Can we get a ruling, Big T? There are seven. Oh, oh no point for you. What? No, no, it's part one is seven and part know. two I'm is eight. I don't know. I'm giving that to Patty. You didn't ask how many books. You asked how many movies. Movies. Books at seven. But I said, like I said, it's eight because there's part one and then there's part two. That's two separate movies. I'm messing with you, Patty. All right. <laughs> what, was <it? laughs> what, was, what, was, what was the last Harry Potter movie called? Patty. Patty. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part two. That's correct. <laughs> what actor starred as Freddie Mercury in the movie Bohemian Rhapsody? Patty. Oh. Patty. Rami Malik. There we go. That's correct. The 2022 Super Bowl halftime show, Matt. Which five artists, of those five artists, which ones won the most Grammy Awards? Frogger. Patty. Frogger than Patty. Go on Eminem. Eminem is correct. He's yeah. won 15 Grammys. Wow. Of the five that performed, which one has never won a Grammy? Patty. Uh, yeah. Patty. That would be uh, 50 Cent. 
Incorrect. Ooh, really? Frogger. Frogger. Kendrick Lamar. Incorrect. No, I know what it is. I know who it is then. Sarah? Sarah? You got three. Um, 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 I'm going to say Snoop. Snoop is correct. Really? Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> that, that is correct. Do you double okay. G? So, so Eminem, Eminem has 15 Grammys. Uh-huh. Of those five, who's second on the list? Ooh, Frogger. Frogger. Dr. Dre. Yeah. Incorrect. Oh. Patty. Sarah. Patty. That would be uh, uh, Kendrick. Kendrick Lamar has 13 Grammys, folks. 13? Mm-hmm. He's good. 13. Good He's very good. Man, it sounds like the Grammys forgot about Dre. <laughs> <laughs> You're Mary J. Good Blige. Re- good reference. <laughs> That's true. Who was, who, was, <laughs> who was originally cast as Shrek before Mike Myers took his role? Frogger. Patty. Frogger. Lou Ferrigno. No. Uh, <laughs> That's funny, Patty. You just don't know Lou Ferrigno. He's the Hulk. Okay, there you go. Uh, uh, John Candy? Um, no, but I'd like to say close because, uh, be anyways, cool. go ahead. Sarah, you got anything? That was my guess. Patty took my guess. Wow. That was actually, Chris Farley. I didn't know he was alive. I didn't know he was still alive around there. I knew he was somewhere, yep. but yeah. Aw. <sighs> Haley Baldwin, daughter of Stephen Baldwin, is married to what superstar? I think Papa just said, who cares? Right, yeah. Right? That's, <laughs> I'm going to give Papa the point on that one. <laughs> Justin Bieber. All right. Oh, oh. yeah. yeah. That. Justin Timberlake married wait, which actress? Wait, ha- wait, wait, wait. Let's go back. Justin Bieber is married to one of the Baldwin kids? Yeah. yeah. Imagine that Thanksgiving table. <laughs> What a nightmare. Yes, imagine that. All right, so reset us. What's that question? I think Patty already buzzed Just, in. Justin Timberlake married which actress? Patty, do you got it? Yeah, Jessica Biel. Jessica Biel's correct. Who is model Chrissy Teigen married to? Frogger. Frogger. It's Chrissy Teigen. Oh, um, oh, oh, um, it's someone else. I know. Patty. Um, Patty. Um, I'm going to go with yeah. uh, uh, Henry Rollins. Incorrect, Sarah. No, I was playing um, next. I don't okay. think you hit your buzzer, dude. We played this song at my wedding. Hold on a second. It was... Yeah, you're, uh, you're there? She's pulling it up on her phone, dude. She's pulling it up on Wait, her phone. She's oh, Googling. I know who it is. I'm calling oh, foul. What's the, what? I can't remember his name. I can hear the song. I got it. I know who oh, it is. Patty, it's John Patty. Legend. There you go. John, John Legend is correct. You know, I love John Legend, but dude, stay away from True Colors. That's, that's Cindy Lauper. Hey. Guess who's going to see John Legend in concert in April? Big Frogger. T. Frogger. <laughs> Big T. <laughs> no, not incorrect. <laughs> incorrect. Frogger's not going. <laughs> uh, that nya nya Adam might Levine. Be going. Adam Levine is the singer of which music group? Frogger. Oh. Frogger. Queen? Patty. Go Did ahead, Frogger. Say... I said Queen. No. No? Incorrect. Patty. He's... Maroon 5. Oh, okay. Maroon 5 is correct. Guess what, Patty? You just pulled into the league. Really. Oh, and we have a minute and a half. Oh, okay, we got time for two more questions, Big T. This is going to decide it. All right. Brothers Mark and Donnie Wahlberg started what restaurant? Patty. Patty. <laughs> Patty. Wahlburgers. Dang it. Wahlburgers is correct. Yes. What was, what was Ross Geller's pet monkey name on TV show, friends? <laughs> Frogger. No. Marcel. <laughs> Marcel is correct. And with that, I scored 10. Producer Sarah had seven. Very respectable. Patty wins the day with a lesson. What? Yo. Way to go. Yo, Patty. <laughs> Woo. I, 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 I will take back the smack I was running earlier on the show. <laughs> Big T, as always, we want to thank you for popping by. I want to thank SCVI facilitator Ingrid Moon, executive director at Bridge to Home, Chris Naharo. Big T, producer Sarah, engineer Patty, and thank you all for listening. Join us again next week and every Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. I am Matt Watson, and this is SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS.